it's Carly McAvoy. I wanted to show you how to use GeoGebra to do a histogram and a poly, a frequency polygon. So let's take a look at GeoGebra.org and click on um, Classic GeoGebra, GeoGebra Classic, sorry, spreadsheet. And then you're going to enter some data. For this example, I'm going to enter some data that has one decimal point. And that's important to think about because we want to make sure that our data has the same accuracy as our class widths. Um, and so I'm just making some things up. Um, doesn't matter what you have. It could repeat again. Your data is irrelevant in this particular example. But you will have data to enter. You can copy and paste data in. You have to use Control V to do that. It's not going to work well if you try to actually paste by right clicking, which is something that I've tried. Um, and so I have, I wanted to put 20 pieces of data in here. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk about it at that point. Okay, so I'm just entering data. I just want you to see there's nothing special about that. I was talking, wasn't really thinking about um, what I put in. Okay, so I have 20 pieces of data, and now I'm just going to highlight that data, um, and I'm going to click on histogram, and then one variable analysis. So here it is. Um, I can click on that and make it smaller. Um, I can see where, where all that is, but what I want to do, because this is starting, it has really wide classes, I want to set those classes to be more to what I want. So I'm going to set those classes manually. Now my lowest value that I entered was 6.9, so I'm going to have them start with 6.9. And then I'm going to have the width be 2.5. Whatever your width is going to be. You can see that that gives you a lot of classes. Let's say that I didn't want that many classes. That looks like seven classes. I got this weird outlier. I got many classes in between here. Let's go with um, 3.5. And you can start to change your width and say, well, what do I really want? But what you want to make sure is that your width is a decimal point, just like your, um, your data was as precise, the same precision. One, two, three. I like that one. I just happen to like that as a thing. Now, let's say that I want to do a frequency polygon with the same data. Notice that it's highlighted over here. I'm going to click on this little um, icon up here, which shows uh, two little rectangles. And when I do that, it gives me a second one. What this down below is, is my box plot. Well, what I'm going to do is change that to um, histogram. I don't want a second histogram, but hang with me there for a second. And then I'm going to put into settings that I want to have instead of a histogram, I want a frequency polygon, which is right down there at the bottom. And I'm going to get rid of that um, histogram that and by unclicking it and clicking on frequency polygon now in your one window you have a histogram and a frequency polygon um, that you can then use now if you when you look at this you might say well the shape of this is different than that well let's change that to have the same uh, set the classes so that they will match because they should match if you're looking at data there's you should have the same uh, class starting place in the same class width. I don't want that down there. And so now if you look at them, I have the 6.9 starting with the 4.1 width. Now you start to see, yeah, it goes up, it's level, then it peaks up and comes down and it goes flat and then up. So you can see that I have the two pieces of the two graphs now that are in sync with each other. And I can look at those simultaneously. I could also decide to look at that as a box plot in a polygon, a frequency polygon, or a st stem and leaf plot in it. There's all these choices on either graph, but if you want them to be similar, you want to set those uh, starting points and widths to be the same. All right, that's going to be a really easy way to do your activity for this uh, week, and I hope everybody has a great day.